Let's dive into some more anatomy of the heart and starting first just with external heart anatomy. Then we'll literally dive into the center of it through the middle. So here is a kind of a schematic of a heart, right? A little different than what I drew for you before. Um, it can be a little more detailed now. So first we've got four chambers, right? These four chambers are the atria and ventricles, two of each. Ventricles are larger than atria and are down um, on the bottom. So here's gonna be our right ventricle, right ventricle RV, our left ventricle. The heart itself is kind of twisted. So the left ventricle is actually larger, but it doesn't look like it in this image just because of um, how the heart looks from right. This is the anterior view. That's what we're gonna start with here. We've got our right atria. This is covered with an oracle. That's actually not one of your terms, but that's why it's all fatty right here. And then our um, left ventricle is kind of, I'm sorry, left atrium is hidden behind these vessels here, our left atrium. Um, so those are the four chambers. And then I also want to orient you to, I, I already mentioned this in the previous video, this is the bottom of the heart here, and this is called the apex. It's this kind of pointed part right here. The base is going to be on this side. It's kind of, I don't really want to draw right there. The base is over here. Um, it's kind of, you can imagine a wider thing. This is the base. Normally bases are at the bottom of something, right? And apex is be at the top. So it's the opposite of that. And it kind of has this crooked shape here, which you remember where that is a thoracic cavity, kind of pushing on that left lung a little bit more than the right lung because of this oblong shape. That's an awful picture. So um, those are the four chambers, the apex and base. I want to, we're gonna name all these vessels. Um, let's do, I don't actually have them as part of your learning outcomes yet, but they will be. So let's just do the basic ones. The aorta and your aortic arch is the arching part of your aorta. Um, just put that there, even though it is really all the aorta. You've got your pulmonary trunk which is going to diverge into the pulmonary arteries that go to the, the lungs. Deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle. And of course, we'll come back to looking at all of the pathways here as well. Then we've got here and here, these are the vena cava. There's inferior and superior that bring oxygen from the entire body. So deoxygenated blood that's returning from the systemic circuit. Um, here you can see the last one I'll label now, the pulmonary veins coming from the lungs, now carrying oxygen going into the left atrium. We'll get a view of this cut in the middle where you can see everything a little better. Um, the last thing I want to tell you about the external heart anatomy is some of the vessels that actually travel just within the heart. So this is called a coronary circuit. Um, you might imagine the heart needs blood, um, it needs glucose, it needs oxygen, it needs to remove carbon dioxide. This coronary circuit actually gets first priority. It's just like on an airplane, how they tell you to put your own oxygen mask on before helping others. Your heart gives itself blood before it gives it to others. And that's probably a good thing because if it can't have enough oxygen, it can't give any blood to anyone else. So the coronary circuit, you can see some of this on here. I'm not gonna go into all the names that are in your book. You can see the red right here. This is our coronary arteries. And these um, are have coronary veins that go alongside them. It's not shown in this picture. I'm just going to draw them in just so that you have them. I do have a picture in the next um, PowerPoint slide that will show them. So alongside most artery systems, there's also veins. 
So that's what this is here. Um, then the last thing are the sul sulci. So there's two sulcuses. Remember, sulcus in the brain means a groove or a fissure. So one of them is actually going to be kind of along right here. There is, and these names are going to make sense. There is it. Um, sorry, that's actually wrong. Name's still going to make sense, but it's not this one. Atrioventricular sulcus. Going to divide the atria from the ventricles. It's not shown in many pictures, but you can kind of imagine where that would be along here. When we look at this back side of the heart, it'll actually be more apparent, the posterior side. The other sulcus we have is right about here. This separates our left and right ventricles. So it's going to be called an inter ventricular sulcus in between the ventricles. Awesome, huh? All right, let's look at this with a picture from, oh, look at that heart beating. I'm glad that wasn't happening the whole time. There it goes. Okay, here is a labeled diagram, a similar picture in your book. These should be pretty much the same things I've labeled. Some things that are shown better in this picture are um, actually if this go right here is that interventricular sulcus. And right here is the atrio, um, atrial ventricular sulcus. In this atrioventricular sulcus, there is a large blood vessel. So a lot of these sulci are indents in between different structures of the heart, different chambers, um, and that's a convenient place to have blood vessels travel through. So that's what you'll see here. Um, so this is the posterior view here, and from the posterior view, you can see we're now looking at someone from the backside, right? So our left is our left as well. left ventricle here, you actually can see how big it is in the right ventricle. Um, so one, I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about the coronary circuit besides that you should know what's important, um, providing circulation for the heart itself. And this is actually um, occurs from just rebound of the, vent the heart beating to provide circulation to the whole body. So of that left ventricle contracting. So it's kind of something that just happens um, as a side effect of how the heart functions. The arteries are obviously arteries. The veins are veins. They carry blood back to the heart. Notice here, so cardiac veins, that's the same thing as a coronary vein. They're kind of called both things. These are gonna drain um, deoxygenated carbon dioxide filled blood back to the coronary sinus. So this is the other thing that was not shown in the other picture. Coronary sinus, a sinus is a, um, a drainage thing, or right? a sinus is for drainage. In this case, this sinus is going to drain the blood. Where do you think? Right here. Like the vena cava, it's going to drain into the right atrium because we need to send it to the lungs to pick up oxygen again. So that's that coronary circuit, the last, that sinus is the last piece. That sinus travels in the atrioventricular sulcus. Um, so one thing I wanna show you before I finish this video is one of the consequences, um, kind of why this matters, this coronary circuit, is heart attack. So what heart attack, actually angina, which is that chest pain, this actually occurs when there's not enough oxygen going to the heart muscle itself. So this um, image here from the American Heart Association is showing some of these, the coronary circuit. And this describes, you know, what can happen because it, either there's um, blockage is often, right, the cause of a heart attack, um, cholesterol buildup, a plaque that blocks flow to the heart itself. And then this is going to result in heart attack. 
Here's a little image of that. So in this coronary artery, fatty deposit, deposits can build up just like this, um, related to diet, genetics. And then um, the blood supply to the heart is diminished, right? Um, and then that's a problem. Here's the full clot. And there's actually dead muscle tissue then. This is then a heart attack. Myocardial infarction is a um, funny word and means heart attack. So nice resource there.